Hey, it's Dr. Amanda with Straight Smile Solutions, straightsmilesolutions.com, and today we're going to talk about the term camouflage, orthodontic treatment. And this is basically a colloquial term that we use when we talk to patients. When we want to get a result or an outcome, but perhaps we can't due to some type of limitation like growth or um, the jaws being uneven. And in order to make a perfect result, we'd have to do a jaw surgery or something like that, but we can't for whatever reason, could be financial, could be insurance, could just be patient doesn't want to do it. So we're gonna do the best we can, so we're gonna camouflage and do the best we can. So usually the outcome's pretty darn good, but not perfect. Um, and that's what camouflaging means, right? We're gonna kind of hide it the best we can. So what are some examples of camouflage? Well, usually I use it in terms of surgical cases. So let's say we have a class three surgical case. That means that patient's lower jaw is bigger than patient's upper jaw. It doesn't could be patient's upper jaw, could be smaller than patient's lower jaw, but whatever. There's a discrepancy. We call this an AP discrepancy or a sagittal discrepancy. And perhaps we're trying to camouflage, make the teeth look nice and straight, get the teeth in a good position, get the bite in a good position, but not get the jaws fixed in order to do it. So perhaps we're going to extract some teeth in order to make the bite good and stable, but we're not fixing the problem at its source, which would be the jaws. So the bite and the teeth might look perfect, but the lower jaw is still gonna look big relative to the upper jaw or the other way around. Upper jaw is still gonna look small relative to the lower jaw, right? It could be the same thing for someone that has a class two discrepancy. That means they're 99 times out of 100. That means your lower jaw is too small relative to your upper jaw. With class three, it can be about 50-50, depending on your ethnicity. But with class two, it's almost always small, lower jaw, not gigantic upper jaw, although I have seen it. Um, small, lower jaw, um, it's a little more hairy. I'm not as much of a in love with the idea of camouflaging that because in order to camouflage that, we have to remove tooth structure or remove teeth from the upper jaw and or slide all the other teeth back, which sometimes can inhibit the tongue space or can affect airway or can affect and increase OSA or obstructive sleep apnea. So I'm not as much of a fan of camouflage um, class two treatment. You really want to look into that. And it was a lot, lot more common 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 years ago. People used to do headgears all the time. You know, that was normal. People when I was in third, fourth grade, even in junior high, they were wearing headgears to school and headgears are pretty much almost gone the type of headgear that restricts the upper jaw movement. Now there's still a headgear, which I call a face mask. It's still typically in the classification of headgear, but that grows the upper jaw to fix a class three bite. That's great, that's super healthy for you. I'm fully on board with that. That's a wonderful thing to do. But we don't wear that to school. The, tech, the technology's gotten better. You can just wear it at night and at home. But yes, camouflage treatment is a thing. That's the term, but it's never gonna be perfect. So for example, in the class three situation, you, you're, like I said, your lower jaw is still going to look bigger. Remember, it might even look worse than it did before from the face because in retracting and in removing teeth from the lower, your lip will often go back and then it kind of accentuates um, the imbalance profile a little bit more. If you have fuller lips, it accentuates it left. Now you could get lip fillers, of course, but that's something you'd have to do every year. It can get expensive. So anyways, all right, so that's what camouflage means, just so you know. All right, thanks.